and you get iOS 16, and you get iOS 16. How cool is that? Hey Craig, does the iPhone 10 get iOS 16? Uh, who's to say, really? I mean, you are, but uh, how about iPhone 7s? Are they getting iOS 16? <laughs> no. Of course not! Oh. Those older iPhones have the A10 Fusion chip. You can't run iOS 16 with just Fusion. You need Bionic. Uh, I have Bionic, right? Yes. It, it, yes, you do. So I should get all of my favorite features in iOS 16, even on the iPhone 10? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll find out myself. One of the greatest perks about buying iPhones and holding on to them for a long time is they basically get more years of support than any other phone on the market. Android phones typically stop getting features after three or four years of updates, and then it's just minor security patches and things, but even if you're not running the latest iOS anymore, Apple will still send out security patches to really old iPhones, some of which are eight to nine, even 10 years old. But as far as like the latest actual update that's gaining features, I'm impressed that the iPhone iPhone 10 is going to be turning six years old this year and is still gaining a lot of functionality thanks to iOS 16 updates. And in this video, I'll be detailing a lot of the things that it's gained, not just in iOS 16, but over the years, but also some of the things it did not get with iOS 16, and they're not too minor, unfortunately. Honestly, two of my favorite parts of iOS 16 did not make it to the iPhone 10, which is a bit of a bummer, but I've got some decent workarounds for you. But I want to be optimistic, of course, so we're going to be talking about the things that it did gain, thankfully. Number one is something that everyone was asking for when the iPhone 10 first launched way back in 2017. That notch got rid of our ever so precious battery percentage. You have to go into control center every single time you want that number. Thankfully, you know, it was kind of up for debate for a while. There were certain iPhones getting battery percentage and some that weren't. I'm happy to report the iPhone 10 did actually get it. It's a shame though that everybody wanted them to add the extra line because that makes the numbers much harder to read and I know none of you agree with me. I preferred the original design where it was just a full battery icon and a number. My brain filled in the gap. I knew what that meant but I guess that wasn't enough for some people so they wanted that extra line but at the end of the day it's an option. If you want it turned on you can and that's something that we just got like in the last year but it's just funny to me that it's finally come full circle because this was originally the iPhone model that kick-started all of this discussion on how to properly implement that user interface and they figured it out, so thank you. Another one that I totally forgot about when I first switched back to the iPhone 10 was, oh yeah, this keyboard. It's not making any tap sounds. It kind of blended into the background for me as soon as they let you turn on keyboard taptics on iOS 16. I had it on my 13 Pro Max and then I kind of forgot I turned it on, except when I went to the iPhone 10, I was like, whoa, whoa, where's the taptic feedback? It's not there. iPhones have amazing taptic engines, so I like it anytime they go off. So of course I turned that on with the iPhone 10 and it works. I'm sure it drains the battery a little bit faster and there was a time yesterday where if I typed too quickly I start to hear the taptic really go crazy and actually rattle a little bit like an old-fashioned vibration motor so I was worried that the UI was gonna crash or something but I restarted the phone and now I can't repeat it anymore so just a isolated instance bug but yes the keyboard taptics are still here another one that was not added with iOS 16 but something that wasn't on the iPhone 10 back in the day when it first launched being able to to change their camera toggles. So thankfully, they did bring that back to the iPhone 10, so you can change your resolution and frame rate without leaving the camera app, but it should be mentioned, this phone did not have that when it first launched. And the crazier thing is they introduced that feature on the iPhone 11 series back in 2019, but they did not bring it back to the older iPhones like this one until 2020, the following year. That's when they were like, hey, you know what? I guess we should introduce those software features to the older iPhones. But for a while there, Apple was software restricting that kind of stuff for the higher end brand new iPhones, even though it totally was possible to add that to the older ones. It was weird. But as far as new iOS 16 functionality goes, even way back on the iPhone 10 with its tiny 5.8 inch 60 hertz display, they still are bringing the Freeform app. I haven't really used it very much yet, but they did add it finally. It wasn't even on the original launch of iOS 16, but it's here now, and as far as I can tell, it works. As do the original 3 
touch features so yeah while a lot of apps have kind of gotten rid of a lot of the functionality of 3d touch you do still have those additional shortcuts and the keyboard cursor mode of just pushing hard still works but there's a few 3d touch features they have removed but i'll save that for the more pessimistic part of the video and they also brought i thought the headlining feature and update of ios 16 the lock screen customization pretty much everything made it over you can just long press on the lock screen switch between different designs and of course you can add all kinds of widgets they all work pretty well in my opinion just as good as they did on my 13 pro max that along with the widgets that you want on your home screen i never found them very useful but they are still in fact available on the iphone 10 with its tiny screen the only difference in the lock screen customization that i find on this phone compared to my 13 pro max is if you want those like personal photos with the time to go behind the subject that won't work even if you're using a picture from a newer iphone so i have a bunch of pictures on this phone that were shot on my 13 pro max but the lock screen you know with the time behind the subject still doesn't work but what's interesting is the preloaded pictures like the clownfish one or the ios 16 default wallpaper where the time goes behind the visualization or like goes behind the plant life that still works so in certain circumstances you can get that little depth effect with the time but not with your own personal pictures because i guess that requires a more sophisticated neural engine that the a11 chip is not rocking however a pretty big feature change that i think you'll definitely notice if you're on an iphone 7 or earlier and you don't have ios 16 thankfully the iphone 10 got all of those iMessage updates so you can edit a text after sending it and you can even unsend it after two minutes that's not a very complicated feature thankfully it doesn't require some kind of special neural engine capability so you can still unsend messages on iphone 10 of course we also got the redesigned notification center so notifications come up from the bottom i think that's much cleaner easier to interact with because the bottom of the screen is usually closer to your thumb than the top where it used to be so i'm glad they brought that over and as well as more basic functionality as well like the updated maps that makes it much easier to pinpoint where to where and have waypoints and stops that still works on iphone 10 with apple maps which is great as does the new weather app nothing geographically is too complicated so yeah you poor android users don't get dark sky but us 200 dollars iphone 10 users we get all of the dark sky benefits and we don't even have to pay a membership for it until apple introduces weather plus inevitably because they're not reaching their services quota i think also as well i thought it was pretty cool i can still pair my 2021 apple watch series 7 and it still works flawlessly with my iphone 10 so no loss of functionality there any apple watch i'm pretty sure should still pair with the iphone 10 but that kind of summarizes in my view some of the biggest updates and functionality changes we've gotten over the years with ios but now for the next part of the video i kind of want to detail all of the things that didn't make the cut for the a11 chip and in my opinion at least maybe not for you but i, I think these are pretty major features to be left out on so for one my favorite feature of all time in ios 16 was most definitely continuity camera the fact that you could just open facetime or obs or anything on your mac and suddenly just select your iphone lens as the camera yeah they did not bring that feature to the iphone 10 which is crazy because they did bring it to the iphone 10s and the 10r and the 10s max not a lot of connectivity differences between those two iphones it's just the a12 chip mostly which i guess has a slightly better neural engine and maybe they use that somehow with continuity camera but the reason i feel kind of weird about that even if it is for some weird bluetooth or wi-fi standard as to why they decided this phone couldn't do it is because i know for a fact it's possible i use a third-party application that i found that's free and works really well called webcam plus and you just download the app on your mac and you download it on your phone and it essentially does the exact same thing as continuity camera it just involves more steps you have to open the app and the app has to stay running on the iphone 10 you know you can't lock the phone but it gives you more control on the app on the mac like you can decide if you want to capture in 4k you can decide the bit rate and you can even switch to the telephoto lens or the front facing camera which continuity camera doesn't let you do i'm not sure why you would need the front facing camera but maybe if you're trying to access you know a portrait mode version of your iphone camera on your computer for whatever reason you can do that with webcam plus but not with continuity camera the only downside i would say is you have to do it through a port it can't be done wirelessly i think there are some other alternatives that let you do it wirelessly but they're not free or they just don't work as well so yes the camera on the iphone 10 is substantially worse than the 13 pro max so maybe apple's mindset is eh you're better off just using your mac webcam than you are the iphone 10 camera but eh, i personally in my own comparisons i still think the iphone 10 camera looks 
looks a bit better than my MacBook's webcam. So I tend to prefer using webcam plus when I can also just for the positioning flexibility, I can put the iPhone wherever I want it. Whereas trying to put my MacBook webcam anywhere I want it is a lot more complicated, but that was by far my favorite feature of iOS 16. I'd been asking for that for years and they implemented it so smoothly. Yeah, I can't do that anymore on the iPhone 10, which is kind of a bummer. The second most favorite feature of iOS 16 to me also didn't make the cut for the iPhone 10, which is subject lift. I used that all the time when designing thumbnails. Like I would love to just download any picture off the internet. And when I'm designing a thumbnail, I can just lift the subject out of it and turn it into a transparent PNG. That was so useful. I loved how well it worked and it was typically pretty accurate and it erased the need for me to use my Apple Pencil half the time, but that didn't make the cut for the iPhone 10. So I just can't do that anymore. But I have a little bit of a cop-out answer. I have a workaround. I still use subject lift from my video thumbnails quite regularly, but I just gotta pull out this old dusty, uh, dated, uh, underappreciated product none of you have probably heard of called the iPad because the iPad Pro from 2018 has the A12X chip. And obviously that chip is still kind of insanely powerful for the time. It's in my opinion, like an M1 light. Like it was faster than many Intel MacBooks that were around at that time. So of course my iPad still supports subject lift. And if I'm designing a thumbnail that for whatever reason needs subject lift, I will just go default to the iPad. I know that's kind of a cheat. Not everybody can do that, but getting an iPad from recent history that has an A12 chip or newer isn't that expensive. So if subject lift is really that important to you, I don't think buying a whole new iPhone just for that is justified. Another one though that I did not become aware of until I actually tried to use it is the no live text feature. This is also a really cool one that I used a lot on my 13 Pro Max is pulling up a picture or like taking a screenshot and just wanting to copy the text directly off of that photo or, you know, taking a picture of a shipping label and there's a tracking number. You can just tap on the tracking number and then open a link. But iPhone 10 doesn't have the proper neural engines to do live text. And I'm used to doing that because there's a commenter on our podcasts that tends to post time codes in the comments and YouTube doesn't make it easy to select text on the app. So typically whenever Riley would comment the time codes, I would screenshot the comment and then select the time codes, copy them, and then paste them in the description of the podcast so that everybody could see them. I was about to do that on my iPhone 10. I took the screenshot and everything, and then I was looking around for the button. I was like, where's, where's the live text feature? And nope wasn't there. Didn't work. Although I do believe it is there on the iPhone XS, so it's only one chip behind, but I guess Apple just decided that it wasn't possible or wasn't worth doing. I personally think it is possible. It probably just would have taken a little bit longer in the app for that icon to show up, but Apple was like, yeah, if it takes that long to show up, we might as well not offer it. So I definitely missed that. And something else that I feel like they got rid of on here that they definitely didn't need to was the ability to 3D touch live photos on the lock screen. So yeah, we got a lot of different lock screen customization with iOS 16, but of course, what did it cost? It cost everything, right? Because this phone has the ability to know the difference between me long pressing and me pressing hard. So I feel like they could have left the option for me to animate the live dynamic wallpaper whenever I push really hard on the screen rather than just long pressing, which is what they used to do for haptic touch features. And it could just be that simple of like, okay, if I'm trying to customize my lock screen, I'll press and hold. But if I'm trying to animate my wallpaper, I could just press hard and activate the that 3D touch capability, but I tested it and no, it doesn't work. I've set live photos as my wallpaper and I've pushed extra hard on the screen and they don't animate like they used to. That's a bit of a bummer because I know the phone is capable of doing that. They just decided for, I guess, UI symmetry. Like if the new phones can't have dynamic wallpapers that change when you push hard on them, then no one can, I guess. But at the same time, they keep a lot of 3D touch features like the keyboard and the shortcuts in the app and all that. So I feel like that was a little bit of a cop-out, but those are just the major pros and cons I've noticed of iOS 16 on the iPhone 10. I'm sure there's more, so if you know of any more, feel free to share in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. This is your AppSweep here, and I will see you all in the next one.